Why, hi there, I'm Ron Chuckett, and it's time once again for a Retro Sports Network Classic. Today, we, we, we replay one of the most controversial games in Major League Baseball history. From September 1908, it's the Chicago Cubs and the New York Giants from the Polo Grounds, and what is known as Merkel's Boner. The date, September 23rd, 1908. The Chicago Cubs, New York Giants, and Pittsburgh Pirates are all in a massive race within one game of each other at the end of the National League season. The Cubs travel to New York to play the Giants in a game that would go down as a tie. We'll tell you why in a minute. But the star of the game, or the infamous star of the game, was one Fred Merkel who was technically a rookie in 1908. He played 17 games in 1907 and 41 games in 1908 and was the first baseman for the New York Giants on this particular game. He wasn't even the regular. In front of 20,000 people at the polo grounds in New York, the Cubs and the Giants battled. And for what Fred Merkel did, ended up costing the Giants the National League. The Cubs would go on to the World Series, which they would win. They would beat the Tiger, Detroit Tigers in five games and win their last World Series in 108 years, thanks to primarily one play in a series of decisions made in offices and off the ball field. Now, in this game that you're about to see, which is not the real game, of course, but rather a simulated replay using Action PC Baseball, there are eight free eight Hall of Famers in this game. Christy Mathewson, Tinker, Evers, and Chance. They add three-figure Brown from the Chicago Cubs being the primary. So let's explain the situation and then we'll play trying to get Fred Merkel out of history's doghouse and forget his boner. From Wikipedia, Jack Fisty remained on the mound for Chicago. It was a 1-1 tie in the bottom of the ninth. Cy Seymour led off with the ground out to second. Art Devlin singled, putting the winning run on first base with one out. Moose McCormick grounded sharply to second, but Devlin's aggressive slide prevented a double play and allowed McCormick to reach first base safely on a fielder's choice. With two outs and McCormick on first, Fred Merkel came up to bat. Merkel, who only had 47 plate appearances in the entire 1908 season, singled on the right field line. McCormick, the potential winning run, advanced to third base. Shortstop Al Bridwell came to bat next with two outs and runners at the corners. Bit Bridwell swung at the first pitch from Fister, a fastball, and drilled an apparent single to center field. McCormick ran home from third and the game appeared to be over, a 2-1 giant victory. Giants fans poured out of the stands and mobbed the field. Fans sitting behind home plate customarily crossed the field to exit the ballpark via the outfield in this era. That also was the case at Yankee Stadium for a long time, too, later. Merkel, advancing from first, saw the fans swarming onto the playing field. He turned back to the dugout without ever touching second. Official Rule 4.09 states that, quote, a run is not scored if the runner advances to home base during a play in which the third out is made by any runner being forced out. Cub second baseman Johnny Evers saw an opportunity to have the rule enforced. He shouted to center fielder Sally Hoffman, who, through the field, though the field was filled with fans, retrieved the ball, or retrieved a ball, and threw it to Evers. According to one account, Joe McGinty, a Giants pitcher who was coaching first that day, intercepted the ball and threw it away into the crowd of fans. Evans apparently retrieved the ball and touched second base, although some reports stated he substituted a different ball. Umpires Emsley and Hank O'Day hurriedly consulted, and O'Day, who saw the play from home plate, ruled that Merkel had not touched second base, and, on that basis, Emsley ruled him out on a force, and, McDay ruled, and O'Day ruled the run did not score. Newspapers told different stories of who had gotten the ball to Evers and how. Christy Mathewson, however, who was also coaching a base for the Giants, because you can't be coaching 
because you can't have Joe Magentine, Chrissy Matthews, and coaching first. Acknowledged in an affidavit that Murphy, that Merkel never made it to second. One newspaper claimed that Cub players physically restrained Merkel from advancing. Retelling the story in 1944, Evers insisted that Magenti, who was not playing in the game, had thrown the ball away. Cubs pitcher Rube Crow, who was also not in the game, retrieved it from a fan and threw it to shortstop Tinker, who threw it to Evers. By rule, after a fan or player who was not in the game directly touched the ball, it should have been ruled dead. A contemporary account from the Chicago Tribune supports this version. However, eight years prior to that, Evers claimed to have gotten the ball directly from Hoffman. Five years after the play, Merkel admitted that he had left the field without touching second, but only after umpire Emsley assured him that they had won the game. In 1914, O'Day said that Evers' tag was irrelevant. He had called the third out after McGinty interfered with the throw from center field. Future Hall of Famer umpire Bill Clem said Merkel's boner was the rottenest decision in the history of baseball. Clem believed that the fourth rule was meant to apply to infield hits, not balls hit to the outfield. So, eventually, the game was replayed because it was a tie which the Cubs won. Chrissy Matthewson was supposed to pitch that game on October 2nd, but he was tired and couldn't go. Actually, I got that wrong. What was the date? October 4th. So the Cubs won the last game of the season and went on to win the World, to beat Detroit in the World Series, all as a result of one crazy, zany play. Could you imagine the television coverage of something like that? I guess the closest thing you could think of in the television era would be would be Chris Chambliss after hitting the game-winning home run in the, the fifth game of the 1976 American League Championship Series, which he just physically could not get around the bases after hitting the home run into, into the bleachers in center field and the fans mobbing the field. He eventually went back and touched the plate with an umpire watching to make that run count, but interference prevented him from initially scoring <laughs> the video of him body checking people anyway so imagine that a pennant comes down to a rookie first baseman playing in a game you probably shouldn't have played in making a bad decision 20,000 people at the polo grounds was a ton the Giants led the National League in attendance with a whopping 910,000 it would be 1946 before any team would hit a million. So 20,000 people bought tickets for this one game. Now looking at the Chicago Daily Tribune, which I'm not going to post on the screen, the game that followed the next day was a 3.30 first pitch start in New York. It was so important to Chicago that the Tribune pulled out an electronic scoreboard or were passed for an electric scoreboard the time and ran a recreation on, on it from Western Union Telegraphs, which was at 2.30. So the game started, let's say the game started at 3.30, it took 90 minutes to play, so the game was accounted for darkness at 5 o'clock. Now that's interesting. A quick check of Google shows that the sunset in New York on September 23rd 2018 was at 6.51 Eastern Time. If we were to believe that this game took 90 minutes and the first pitch was after the markets closed at 3.30, they had plenty of time to finish this game. But with fans all over the field, it probably was impossible to restore order in time. But there you go. They had three hours and 21 minutes to get a game in that took an hour and a half to play. All right, when we come back, it's baseball on this Retro Sports Network Classic. Well, darkness shouldn't be a problem here. It's a beautiful day at the Polo Ground. 77 degrees, the wind is blowing 50 miles an hour off the right field. And this place is jam-packed. And top of Putin's bluff behind me in the and the makeshift press box, another 20,000 people sit. So there are as many as 40,000 people watching Christy Matthewson and Jack Feister go at it here with a pennant on the line. 
on this Wednesday afternoon, September 23rd, 1980. Jack Hayden, who only had 45 regular season at bats, is the Cubs right fielder. He'll lead off. Johnny Evers, the left-handed hitting second baseman, will hit second. Schulte, Wildfire Schulte, the left fielder, will bat third. Frank Chance, the first baseman, bats fourth. Steinfeld, Harry Steinfeld, the third baseman, will bat fifth for the Cubs. Solly Hoffman is the center fielder. He'll bat sixth. Joe Tinker is at short. One of the, the last of the three Cub Hall of Famers in this lineup. Johnny Kling is behind the plate, and Jack Feister is the pitcher. And they'll all face Christy Matthewson, if you will, the Matt Scherzer of his day. He won 37 games in 1980. He lost 11 with a 1 4 3 ERA and is retroactively credited with five saves. He threw 390.2 innings. That's almost two years worth of work for a modern ace. He only allowed 285 hits, five home runs, 42 walks, and 259 strikeouts. Honestly, the best pitcher of his day between Cy Young's peak and the arrival of Walter Johnson down the road in Washington. The defense around Mr. Matthewson, it's Moose McCormick at left. He's absolutely god awful. Seymour is in center. He's a seven range and a nine arm. Mike Donlin, who was a very good hitter, especially with the New York Highlanders, the precursor of the New York Yankees, is in right, a good hitter. Devlin is the third baseman. He's a 10 range, which is just phenomenal for the era. Art Gridwell is a shortstop. He's okay. Herzog, no relation to Whitey, is at second base. And Fred Merkel, who, as we said, had a monumental career with the Giants. Brooklyn Robin, later the Dodgers, and the Chicago Cubs, is at first. And he's not a good fielder. Roger Bresnahan is, the, is a Hall of Famer behind the plate. Christy Matheson, of course, is a Hall of Famer on the mound. So the starting lineups in this game feature five Hall of Famers, three from the Cubs and two from the Giants. And Matheson says he's ready. Jeff Hilton says he's ready. Let's do this. Hayden on the, the 200 with two RBI and two doubles. And Matthewson's delivery is a ground ball right back to Christie over to Merkel. And that's how this one starts. Here's Johnny Evers, of course, one of the three Cup Hall of Famers in the starting lineup. Evers hit 319.8 with six triples and 37 RBI. Matthewson's delivery, and there's a ground ball up the middle. Good play by Bridwell over to Merkel, and there's two quick outs. Wildfire Schulte, 236, a home run and 43 RBI. Matthewson, who can throw as many as 150 pitches in the game. Delivers, and there's a fly ball to center. Seymour tracks it down. And that retires the side. The Cubs go in order in the first. You can hear the dots and the dashes going back to the machines across the country, especially in Chicago. Chicago nothing, the Giants coming up. Jack Fister wasn't, you know, chop liver himself. He went 12 and 10 on the year with an ERA of two. 252 innings, he allowed 204 hits, one home run, 70 walks and 117 strikeouts. People hit the contact in this era, and also a lot of small ball. The defense around Fister and Meister. It's Schultz and left. A two range for a nine arm. The Giants do have speed, and Schultz hopes to shut it down. Hoffman is a good center fielder. Eight range and eight arm. Hayden, not so much. A five range and three arm. The infield, Stein fell at third as a six. Tinker is a six. Evers is a six, and Chance is an eight. But the trio was the stars of, the, of its day. Tinkers to Evers to Chance, the original double play combination of the ages. Kling is a heck of a catcher. He is a 10 range and a nine arm. And Fister is a lefty. And the Giants, however, the Giants feature four lefties in the lineup. I guess we didn't continue. 
including Buck Herzog, who will lead us off at second base. The Hall of Famer Roger Bresnahan will catch him at second. Donlin, the right fielder, will hit third. Seymour cleans up. Art Devlin will bat fifth. Moose Cormick will hit sixth. Fred Merkel, the man of the hour, will hit seventh. Art Bridwell hits eighth. And of course, the pitcher, Christy Matthewson, who retired the side on 10 pitches, will hit ninth. And so Herzog lightly digs in. Fister's ready. Feister's ready. And we're underway again. He got him. He's got him to swing on an 0 2 fastball. A curve. Swung on him in strike three. So strikeouts were not a big part of the game then. But anytime you got one, you were going to take it. Here's Roger Bresnahan. 283 and 08 with a homer and 54 RBI. Three triples. And you would think that this park is easy to triple on. I'll explain to that in a minute. Pister's pitch. There's a fly ball to center. Hoffman's there, two up. Mike Donlin. These are a bit like Joey from Friends. 334, six home runs, and that was a lot for the year. 13 triples and 106 RBI. But he struck out 123 times in an era where 200 strikeouts for a pitcher was considered a ton. Here's the pitch, and there's a fly ball to center. Hoffman is there, and that retires his eye. No runs, no hits, no errors. We go to the second. No score. So here's Frank Chance. Frank at 272, four triples, two homers, and 55 RBI. Matthewson's ready, and there's a liner in the left center that Chance will hammer it for a single, and that's the first base runner of the game. So Murko will hold him at first, and now we're bringing up Harry Steinfeld. He went 241, a home run and 62 RBI. Let's see if he bucks here. Giants are playing for it. Let's see if the computer can adapt. Here's the pitch, and he does lay one down. Merkel over to Herzog, covering first, and he's retired. So the bunt works. And Chance moves to second for Solly Hoffman. 243, five triples, two homers, and 42 RBI. And the Wheel of Fortune play gets then Chance's back at second. Here's the pitch. Hoffman, ground ball right back to Matthewson. Over to Herzog. Is that a swinging punt? That was a punt, so it will do it. Another sacrifice, and Chance moves to third. Two out for Joe Tinker at 266, 14 triples. And remember, triples were the primary power number of the day. Six home runs and 68 RBI. So chance on third in this big game. This one cannot end in a tie. Just a gorgeous day here in Manhattan. Everyone left Wall Street just a tiny bit early to get here for the start of this one. Pitch for Matthewson is a fly ball to left. McCormick has it in the sun and makes the catch. No runs, one hit, no error. After one and a half, it's the Cubs nothing, the Giants nothing. So here's Cy Seymour. 267, five home runs and 92 RBI as a cleanup hitter. And as you can see from this picture, he also spent some time with the Cincinnati Red Lights. Spicer's delivery is a base hit in the right field. Seymour rounds first and will hold and the Giants have their first base runner of the afternoon. Here's Art Devlin, 253, four triples, two homers, and 45 RBI. Seymour is not a threat to steal, and Devlin is not going to fight. Here's the pitch. There's a fly ball to right. Here's Hayden, one out. John McGraw is the Giants manager, and he'll hold Seymour in three. Although this adaptation of the polo grounds that you see is from the video game and probably was from when the Giants were there before the move in to California. There was no real outfield bleachers per se. That those were added when Yankee Stadium's construction started right across the Harlem River. And they were about a half mile apart. Yankee Stadium was built in 1923. 
But the Polo Grounds was a massive stadium for its day. Even in when the Mets were there in 1962 and 63, it was a 483-foot shot in the dead center. I would be surprised as Moose McCormick steps up to the plate, 302, no home runs, three triples, and 32 RBI. That if you put a golf ball and tee at home plate with the technology at the time, that you could get an iron to hit that dead center on the fly. But you would need a persimmon, you probably would need a driver. The 165 yard drive. Anyway, one out for Seymour, here's the corner. Pitch from Feister is a fly ball to center. Hoffman is there, and that's an out. So here's Fred Merkel. Fred played five World Series and lost them all. The Giants won the pennant in 11, 12, and 13. And, and they lost all those. He played, played for the Brooklyn Robins in 1916. He was three person for the Dodgers, and they lost to the Red Sox. And he was with the Chicago Cubs in 1918, who lost to the Boston Red Sox. So Murphy won the year, a 268, one triple, one homer, and seven RBI. Two outs here in the seventh. But from Feister is a fly ball to right. Peyton is there. And that retires the side. No runs, one hit, no errors. After two, Cubs nothing, the Giants nothing. It'll be Kling, Feister, and Hayden here for the Cubs in the third. Kling at 276 with five triples, four home runs, and 59 RBI. And this pause button works well on this piece. So Matthewson's ready. He's only thrown 19 pitches to two innings. Like that mattered then. He's going all the way, Christy. Here's Kling. And there's a fly bottle left. McCormick is there for the app one out. It was only 250 some odd feet on the lines at the Polo Grounds. This place was the ultimate football palace before football was really a thing. Horseshoe shape. The Giants called it home. Well, there were actually three public ground buildings all right near each other. The Giants called it home from the 1890s all the way to 1957 when they moved to San Francisco. Here's Feister, a 101 hitter for two RBI. And he draws a rare walk from Matthews. And Matthews had only walked 42 in just about 400 innings. So one on and one out for Hayden. Who grounded out to Matthews in the start of the game. Christie in his first time threw 26 pitches. Two in the third innings, a hit and a walk. The pitch, and Preston Han can't get a handle on that. So Feister moves to second on the pass ball. A 90 mile an hour fastball just kind of hit the dirt. Preston Han hoped it would go one way and it went another. So a 2 0 count to Hayden. Here's the pitch. And that's a ball for ball four. So Matthewson has walked himself into some trouble here. Brings up Johnny Evers. Who grounded out to Bridwell on the first. One out, runners on first and second for the Cubs. Diamonds playing it halfway, and there's a fly ball to left. McCormick is there, two out. Feister will hold in second. And then we'll bring up Rob Fire Schultz, who flew out to deep right center by Donald and, and, and the Bullfans. Here's the pitch from Matthews, and got it! He changed the 2 2 pitch for strike three. So nothing across, Matthewson gets away with the two walks after two and a half. It's the Cubs, nothing, the Giants, nothing. So Bridwell, Matthewson, and Buck Herzog to face Feister here in the third. Bridwell at 285, a triple at 46 RBI. And that's an eight. Feister's overhand delivery, ground ball to Evers over the chance where we heard that before. And there's one out, a one-two spitter. 
I don't like that. 85 mile an hour spin. Here's Christy Matthewson. Christy at 155 with 11 RBI. Lots of ties to New York, obviously, pitching for the Giants. He died at the young age of 45 from tuberculosis, if you did not know that, as part of a training accident before World War I, before being deployed for World War I. He inhaled some chemical munitions, some gas, some mustard gas, if you will. He's, while he survived the accidental attack, he suffered for the rest of his life. He spent some time up at Lake Placid. He was at that point a sanitarian, a tuberculosis patient. Spicer's pitch, there's a ground ball to Evers. Over the chance, and there's two away here in the third. For Buck Herzog, who struck out his first time up, Feister has thrown 39 pitches, which is really not a concern in, in, with these pitch counts. Two and two thirds innings, a hit and a strikeout. Now, one strikeout victim was Buck Herzog. We played in limited action in 1980. Here's the pitch. And that's going to be a liner to center, and it gets in front of Hoffman. So we took the 2 2 pitch where he could, and the Giants had their second hit of the game. So here's Roger Bresnahan. With two out, he flew to left center, and he grounds this one to Evers over to Chance. And that retires the side. No runs, one hit, no errors. After three, the natives are getting nervous. There's no score. So Chance, Steinfeld, and Hoffman for the Cubbies here in the fourth. Chance signal his first time up. The only hit for the Cubs. Here's the pitch. Ground ball to Bridwell. So Merkel, one out. So Steinfeld will actually swing here. He had a sack punt in the, his first time up, and so did Hoffman to follow. Christie's delivery, ball four. And let's see what they do with Solly Hoffman, who just was not that great of a hitter. Even for the time, 243 wasn't good. It wasn't terrible. Giants play for the button. And if he delivers, Devlin with it over to Herzog, and there's two outs. So Steinfeld is bunted over to second. And Joe Tinker, who's 0 for 1, flew out to left center in the second, gets the chance to move to try to score the game's first run. Matthewson's pitch struck him out. A Scroogey strike three called. So after three and a half, it's the Cubs nothing, the Giants nothing. So here's Mike Donlin. Who flew out the deep left center his first time up. The Cubs have one hit and they stranded four. Giants have two hits. They stranded two. And the pitch. And there's a little liner up the middle that bounces in front of Hoffman. And the Giants have a run around and nobody out for Cy Seymour. And well, bunt against Feister. The bunt is down. Feister's throw to Evers covering first. And Donlin's over to second. For Devlin, he's 0 for 1. He flew out to deep, deep right his first time up. Meister delivers. He got, he got him to look for at strike three, and Devlin just kind of shakes his head at Emsley, the umpire, and Emsley says, go sit down. So here's Bruce McCormick, 0 for 1. Flew out to the shallow center. Two outs here in the fourth. Meister's pitch, and it's a comeback a right to Jack over to Chance, and that retires the side. No runs, another hit for the Giants. They strand him after four. Cubs nothing, the Giants nothing. So playing Feister in Hayden for Chicago here in the fifth. Johnny is 0 for 1. Flew out to left in the third. Matthewson. Warm day here in New York, and they're wearing wool unis. I believe the Giants, I didn't look for them, but I believe the Giants had some pinstripe numbers and were white. So on a 78 degree late summer day, 
it's going to be rather uncomfortable. And you can see, just from the illustration, imagine sitting out there in left and center field with the sun starting to go down over that neck. Pitch to Kling is a fly ball to shallow center. In comes Seymour in a long run, and he got it. Here's Feister. He walked his first time up. One of the three issued by Matthews in this afternoon. The pitch, fly ball to right field. Nyland moves over by the line and makes the catch for the second out. So Christie, 60 pitches through 18 batters, four and two thirds innings, and hit. He has walked three and struck out two, just as the doctor ordered. Chad Hayden has walked. And hit a comebacker to Matthews. And this time he hits a high fly ball to right center. Donlin has to run him. My goodness, there's a lot of territory out there to make the catch. Halfway home, the Cubs nothing, the Giants nothing. It's Merkel, Bridwell, and Matthewson coming up for Feister. I'm not sure as Merkel steps in, he's 0 for 1. He threw to deep right. If how flat the field was in 198. By the 50s with drainage, there was quite the, the hump between the infield and the outfield. Willie Mays had a tough time seeing it. If you were standing at second base or whatever and looked out towards dead center, you'd only see the upper half of Mays' torso. That's how extreme the crown is, or was. Now it's a housing project. Here's the pitch to Merkel, and there's the ground ball base hit right side. So Merkel doesn't make the corner there. He stops at first, and that's the fourth giant hit. So here's Bridwell. Out grounded to second. He's not going to bunt here with Matheson coming up. Although they can. And there's a liner right to Evans, and Merkel holds on. One out. Matthewson gets the bunt in the air. This is not a good bunt. Here comes Kling, and he makes the catch. So the bunt was popped up, and Merkel will hold it first for Bunt Herzog. He was a single and a strikeout. He's one for two. So Feister is at 70 pitches through 18 batters and four and two thirds innings. Four hits and two strikeouts. A whole bunch of Bengals on the scoreboard. Nothing, nothing here in the fifth. Here's the pitch. Herzog, ground ball to chance. Takes the bag himself, and that retires the side. Again, no runs, a hit, no errors. This is getting pretty tense. Matthewson and Feister matching zeros in a 0-0 tie. So Evers, Schulte, and Chance. Donnie is 0 for 2. Routed to short and fly to left. Matthewson delivers, and there's a liner foul down the right side. Souvenir for somebody, and it's an 0-2 camp. Here's the pitch. Evers puts one down, and that's going to be a successful base hit. Merkel was caught by surprise. The Giants were playing back. I wondered if I should be there. And so the Cubs have their, only their second hit. Here's Schulte. Dines playing for the bunt. He delivers Bresnahan over to Herzog for an out. So Evers moves to second on the sacrifice. Chance is not going to bunt here. He's one for two. He's a single. I missed it. And grounded out to Bridwell on the fourth. The pitch. Got him. The 0 2 fastball on the inside part of the plate. Shadow's about to get over there, so advantage pitchers, and there's two out. That's three for Christie. And it'll bring up Steinfeld with two out, and he has sacrificed and walked. Gonna swing this time, and he does. It's a ground ball of Merkel. Over to Matthews and covering, and that retires the side. Another zero goes up on the scoreboard. No run to hit no errors after five and a half. As the text says, it's still scoreless. So Bresnahan, Madeline, and, and Seymour, the heart of the giant lineup here in the sixth for, against Feister. Bresnahan is over two. Flew out and grounded out. And this time he'll draw a walk. 
he is not going to steal, and mm, Cubs do not play for the bunt, and not, I would not bunt Donald here. He's got too much of a chance of doing something good. He only hit lefties at a 310 clip, though. So here's the pitch, and there's a ground ball to Evers over to Tinker, and Bresnahan knocks out Tinker with a slide. There's no throw to first, and Donald reaches. So score it 4-6, it's a big game, you shouldn't be scoring it anyway, but 4-6 on the force, and Donlin reaches on a fielder's choice for Seymour, who was sacrificed and sick gold. And we're going to swing away, and Seymour hits one up the middle, so Donlin moves to second. They will not run on Hoffman, and so first and second for the Giants for Art Devlin. It was 0 for 2. Blew out the deep left his first time out and struck out. One of the two recorded by Feister this afternoon. It's about 80 degrees in the late afternoon sun. Winds are blowing straight out the center and 11. Next to Devlin is a fly popped up. Tinker's there. Infield fly is called and there's two out. For Moose McCormick, it was 0 for 2. Runners on first and second. Cubs have stranded five today. And the Giants have stranded four so far. Here's the pitch. Got him. He got him to swung on and right in the clinched glove for strike three. So Pfizer wipes his brow as he leaves the mound. No runs, one hit, no errors. After six, it's a whole bunch of zeros. Nothing, nothing. So Hoffman, Tinker, and Quinn, six, seven, and eight for the Cubs here in the seventh. Hoffman is not taking the bat off his shoulders. It's two sacrifices. This time he grounds one to Devlin. Over to Merkel. And there's one out. Joe Tinker, over for two. Flew out to left and struck out. Matthewson delivers, it's a ground ball to Devlin. He's going to have to hurry over to Merkel, and they got him. No, he did not. He beat it out. He beat it out for Kling. It was a close, with Kling coming up. It was a close play. It was a good throw, but Tinker, who was nine speed out of ten, was just that much faster. And the Cubs have a base hit here in the seventh. That's only the third hit Matthewson is allowed. The pitch to Kling, and there's a liner in the right field that's going to drop for a base hit. Tinker will hold. No, he's going to go for third. Donald's throw is going to be not in time. So runners in the corners are one out for the pitcher Feinster. They're playing bunt. Merkel and Devlin are in on the grass. Matt, Bresden and Matthewson exchange a few words. Matthewson's ready, and there's a ground ball to Bridwell. And they're going to play for two. They're not going to try for the plate. To Herzog for one. To Merkel for two. No, it is not a double play. Her the transfer didn't go there. So the throw to first was late. The run scores. Tinker will score. And it's 1-0 Chicago. So here's Jack Hayden. He's 0 for 2 with the walk. Matthewson has faced 27 batters. 92 pitches, 6 and 2 thirds innings. Four hits. The one run, it was earned coming here in the seventh. Three walks and three strikeouts. Here's the pitch. Feister goes. Herzog has it, and they got him. So Feister tried his luck by stealing there, and that ends the inning. Time to stretch it, Manhattan. One run, two hits, and no errors. The Cubs get on the board first. One nothing. And so it's that man, Merkel, Grinwell, and Matthewson here in the seventh. Merkel is single. He's one for two. Feister's pitch. There's a fly ball to Hoffman. Hoffman has a great play. He had to make a diving catch for it, but he got it. 
And that starts the bottom of the seven. Here's Bridwell. Run of the second and line to Evers. One out, bottom of the seven. And there's a fly ball to center. Hoffman has it lined up, two out. Here's Matthewson. Christie is 0 for 2. Meister delivers, and there's a liner right to Joe Tinker. And so no runs, no hits, no errors. The Giants are down to six outs. The Cubs lead as we start the eighth, one nothing. So top of the lineup, oh, yeah, because of Feister getting thrown out trying to steal seven. Not the smartest play in the world, but the Cubs hope that that run will stick and they can win this one nothing. Of course, they would love another run. It's delayed and struck him out. An 0-2 pick swung on a miss. So that's four for Christie. And Johnny Evers, one for three. He funded for a single in the sixth, grounded out in the first, and flew out the left in the third. The pitch, this time it swung on and grounded to Herzog over to Merkel. And they're two out. Wildfire Schulte. 0 for 2. Throw out to deep right in the third. Struck out the third. And what got down the sack bunt in the sixth. Matthewson's pitch popped up right side. Herzog in the foul territory will flag it down. No runs, no hits, no errors. Seven and a half down. Top of the lineup for the Giants. It's still 1-0 Chicago. So Feister, who 27 batters, has thrown 108 pitches. He can go 140. Seven innings, five hits. He's got a clean game going. On the scoreboard anyway, a walk and three strikeouts. One of those being Herzog, who also was a single. And Herzog takes one. In the ribs. And so Bresnan hit, the Cubs expect Bresnan hit the bunt. And we will oblige. Roger is over to the walk coming in here. And so the bun is down. The throw is over to first. It was actually a great play. It kind of got moved around there. Kling kind of booted it and then picked it up and took his time and made the throw. So it scored 2-3 two, on 2-4 two, in the bun. Everything went over the cover. So the time run is on for Donlin. It was one for three with a single, one out. Here's the pitch. There's a ground ball to Steinfeld over the chance, and Donlin is out. It was close. It was a bang bang play, but with two out, Herzog, the time run is at third for Cy Seymour, who was single twice and bunted twice, I believe. No once. So, single in the second, a single in the sixth, and a sacrifice in the fourth thrown in. Feister's ready. Seymour, ground ball to Tinker. Over to Chance, and that retires the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. Look, he's batting third in the ninth. We go to the top of the ninth, and the Chicago won the Giants nothing. And Matthewson will face Chance, Steinfeld, and Hoffman. Chance is one for three, a single struck out. Here's the pitch, fly ball left center. Back goes Seymour, he's running and he makes the catch against the wall. He must have run 200 feet himself. That ball hung in there. It's still blowing out the center at about 11. And he makes the catch. Here's Steinfeld, Harry is 0 for 1. Bunted in the second, sack bunt in the second, a walk in the fourth. And the ground out to Marco in the sixth. One out. Matthewson delivers, and there's a fly ball to left. The Cormick's there, two out. Solly Hoffman, if you're wondering, there was an actual home run of this game that was hit by Tinker. Remember, this was in real life, this was a one, officially a 1-1 one, one tie. Hoffman is 0 for 1. Sally has sacrificed twice and grounded the third. The 
pitch. There's a fly ball to right. Donlin is there, and that retires the side. We go to the bottom of the ninth. This is when all the fun begins. Jack Feister on the 124 pitches will face Devlin McCormick, and yes, I'm not going to pinch hit for Markle. And it was Birdwell, remember, who had the hit in real life that Merkel did not touch second on. And he had to touch second because he was on first when the hit happened. So Devlin is 0 for 3 with the strikeout. Feister is ready. Everyone on the edge of their seats. Here we go. Ground ball to Tinker. Over the chance, one out. If you're wondering about home run, forget about it. You know, Merkel had one on a year, but McCormick didn't. And he batted. There was no pinch hitter, so we're running him. Here's the pitch. There's a ground ball, left side base hit. It's almost as if Kisman is there. He's going to go for two. Slagle, throw in to second, is not in time. Slagle was in the game as a, the left field, as a left fielder. So the Cubs have removed Schulte. We're supposed to ask him that question. And so Slagle is the left fielder. Given Slagle played in 104 games. And if he was the bat, he is a 242 hitter with no home runs, a triple and 26 RBI. So a late change puts Slagle on the left, McCormick, the tying run is on second. Merkel, one for three. The pitch, and there's a line drive, base hit. Hayden will grab it. The game is tied. Merkel's on, would you believe that? You know, I play these straight up. So Merkel was on first for Bridwell. And so the Giants have tied this game in the ninth. Bridwell is 0 for 3. He had 14 doubles and a triple on the year. And so the Cubs have gotten to Feister. I mean, the Giants have gotten to Feister in the ninth. The pitch to Bridwell. Liner to center. Hoffman is there. Two out. And now Christy Matthewson, who will bat, is 0 for 3. Feister is starting to tire. Merkel on first. Shoot, but believe that. What? Jiminy Crickets. He hits the game tying RBI. Fling goes out for Feister. And here's the pitch to Matthewson. Popped up. Tinker is there. And how about that? We're going extra. To the 10th we go. Free baseball for everybody. The Cubs and Giants. 1-1. One, one. So Matthewson will face Tinker Kling and maybe a pinch hitter. Feister, we'll see what they do with Feister. He's pitched, counts at 146. Doesn't really matter for the era, but that's that's still a lot. He worked hard. A run on four, it's a no errors for the Cubs. A run on seven hits and no errors for the Giants. Chicago has faded five, the Giants have faded eight. The pitch to Tinker is strike three, an 0-2 spitter on the outside corner. So one out for Quinn, it was one for three. You thought this was tense before, now you got extra in it. Here's the pitch. Quinn lines one to Devlin for the out. Two outs, two fast ones here in the 10. Here's Feister, let's see what they do. He's over two, he has a walk and an RBI. He grounded to short, and reached on the fielder's choice in the seventh, which put the Cubs on the board. He will not bat. It'll be Jimmy Shepard. You know what? That's right. Because I this is the new computer. So Shepard will pinch it. The Cubs will have a new pitcher here in the tenth. Shepard at 231, three triples, two homers, and 22 RBI. And there's a fly ball to right. Donlin's there, and that retires the side. So we go to the bottom of the 10th. It's going to be Carl Lundgren coming in to pitch. He went 6-9 in 08. 
a 4.22 ERA, 138 and two-thirds innings, 149 hits, five home runs, 56 walks, and 36 strikeouts, and face the top of the giant order. Buck Kirkzog is one for three, a single and a strikeout. Here is the pitch, fly ball to center. Hoffman's there, one out. Here's Bresnahan, and he is 0 for 2. Walked, flat out to left center in the first, grounded out to second in the third, and bunted in the eighth. The pitch. And there's the one that's pitched to the hole on the left side. Bresnahan is on, and the Giants have the winning run on and one out for Donlin. We'll try to drop one for a hit. It's down. The throw to second. Tinker has it over to Evers. Not in time. So two out. The bunt did not work. And that brings up Cy Seymour, who is two for three. A single twice. So Dylan is the winning run. The pitch is a little, little looper in the right. Hayden gets it on the hop. Donlin goes to third. The Giants have runners in the corners and two out. For Art Devlin, who's 0 for 4. So what did I say? They couldn't go more than three and a half hours or three hours. Here's the pitch. There's a ground ball to Steinfeld over to Evers, and they go to the 11. The Giants strand two, no runs to it, no errors, and after 10, it's still 1-1. Well, I said we couldn't tie, but we'll let this game go for another technically hour. So if you look at that, a 3.30 first pitch, the time in New York is now 5.42. So we'll give it another half hour. That should give us a couple more innings. And then we'll have to call it. We could actually end up with a tie. The wind is whipping out the center now, 18. And it's 83 degrees. Matthewson starts his fifth time through with 125 pitches. In 10 innings, four hits, he's walked three and struck out five. The one run was earned. Hayden is 0 for three, and he hits a fly ball to shallow center. Seymour is there, one out. Johnny Ever is the batter. Johnny is one for four. And he laces one into left field. McCormick fields it on a hop, and he misplays the ball. McCormick tried to pick it up before he had it on his hand, and Evers is the go-ahead run at second with one out. For Jimmy Slagle, who at 222 with one triple, no homers, and 26 RBI. The Giants are playing for the sacrifice. Matthewson delivers, and it's a line drive to Herzog. And Evers gets back to the bag. Now Slago rolls his ankle. And so he's done. So if here's Chance. Frank is one for four. He's single and struck out. The Cubs are going to need another left fielder in the bottom of the 11. Matthewson delivers, chance it's a fly ball to left. McCormick, this time he makes the catch, and that retires the side. So Dell Howard comes into play left. 96 games, three triples, a home run, 42 or 26 runs batted in. And a 279 average. Carl Lundgren gets his second inning of relief. McCormick, Merkel, and Bridwell. McCormick's double in the ninth set up Merkel's game tie hit. Here's the pitch. And there's a liner to center field. The Hoffman corrals one out. So here's Merkel. Fred is two for four. He's done anything but commit a boner this afternoon. He singled twice and drove in the tying run in the ninth inning. It's from Lundgren as a ground ball to Tinker. Over to Chance, two out. Here is Bridwell. It's 0 for four. Here's the pitch. 
And there's a fly ball to right. Back throws Hayden to the track, and that retires the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. After 11, the Cubs won, the Giants won, and here's Matthews in to pitch the 12th. And remember, you can't go past 245. It's 224. So we'll play this inning, the 12th inning. But now we're at 354, 554. 24, 6, so it's 620, right? No, 330 first pitch, 530, 24, is 554. So we have 34 minutes of playable daylight left. We could end up in a tie. So here's Steinfeld, Hoffman and Tinker. Steinfeld is 0 for 2 with a walk. And Matthewson's pitch is a ground ball to Bradwell over to Merkel. Is it time? No, it's not. Steinfeld beat it out. He had to be quick. Bridwell did with a throw, and Steinfeld beats it out. So here's Hoffman. Who you know is going to bunt here. Giants are playing for it. Matthewson's ready. But is down. Christie can't make a play. He bobbles it. And it's an E1. And Joe Tinker steps to the plate. Excuse me. With a winning run on, with a go ahead run on second, and a major insurance run on first. Here's the pitch. The plane for the bunt. Tinker puts one down. Bresnahan over to Herzog for the out. So only one out. Johnny Kling gets four wide. And so the bases are loaded. And the 20,000 in the stands and the 20,000 surrounding the park watching from the subway platforms and all that are on their collective feet. Will Lundgren bat here? If he does, he's hitting 149 with an RBI. The Giants assuredly will play for two. And it will be Kit Durbin. And again, that's the logical move. 250, seven for 28 on the year. Giants play the halfway, one out. Matthewson delivers, and there's a base hit in the left field. Steinfeld will score. Hoffman will come around. McCormick does not have a great arm, and he's safe. So the tag was there, and the run scores. So Hoffman and Tinker score, and it's 3-1 to Chicago here in the 12th inning. So Matthewson is he ever battle today. Bases Jack Hayden, six times through the lineup. John McGraw is edging back and forth. He, you know, Chris is his guy. Let's see what he does. Hayden hits a fly ball to center. Seymour has it two out. Cling will go to third. Seymour is going to throw. Devlin puts on the tag. Not now. The throw is away from the base. So again, first and third, two out for Johnny Evers. He was two for five. Here's the pitch. Ground ball to Herzog. Over to Merkel. The Giants need a miracle now. We go to the bottom of the 12th. The Cubs lead three to one. So Matthewson will not back. Group Pro with a 1 5 0 ERA and 12 innings, he's allowed 9 hits. He's walked 4 and struck out 11. And who did the Giants have? They're going to bring in. Larry Doyle. He's a 308 hitter. Nine triples and 33 RBI. Fred Tenney, by the way, is a normal giant first baseman. 
So the Giants need two to tie and three to win. Throw delivers, and there's a base hit in the left field. Howard not cuts it off, and the Giants have the tie on the plate, and Buck Herzog with nobody out. That's a 10 hit from New York. And he will sacrifice. It is down. Kling with a great throw to get him. It was a good bunt that a little bit further. And there is some speed there. So here's Bresnahan. One for three with a walk. He lined the singles last time up. Sack bunted in the eighth. Walk in the sixth. Grounded out the second and the third. And flew out to left center in the first. He is the tying run. Donlin on deck. Doyle leads off second. Fly ball to center. Hoffman goes back and makes the catch. Doyle goes back to tag the throw, and the third is not in time. So Doyle has run the Giants' need on third, but the game is at the plate with Donlin. If he doesn't reach, the game is over. And the Cubs will not need the playoff. They'll have won the pennant. Well, they won't win the pennant here, but effectively won the pennant with this win. Here's the pitch. There's a fly ball to right. Hayden has got it, and the Cubbies win. Three to one. And so just as the sun was getting a little too low, the Cubs win this one three to one. Two hours and 40 minutes to play. So this would have been over at 6.20 in New York. About, yeah, we wouldn't have been able to start another inning. So the Cubs win just as darkness really starts to fall. Christy Matthewson gets the loss. 12 innings, 7 hits, 3 runs, 2 earned. Errors by Matthewson himself and McCormick and left. And that really hurt because that came in the 12th inning. He... Obviously, no home runs. He walked four and struck out five. He threw 159 pitches, 110 strikes, 49 balls. Jack Feister, nine innings, seven hits, a run it was earned. He walked one, struck out three, and the Cubs bullpen threw three innings of shutout ball. Two hits by Lundgren and one by Cole. I'll have a final word in a moment. Well, that was pretty exciting. Always wild. Some, when you look into something in a real life game and you actually simulate the game, that real life stuff pops up. And Merkel actually did hit the tying hit or was a big reached in that big ninth inning back in 1908. And lo and behold, he drove in the tying run in the ninth and had the chance to win it. Now, he didn't stop what happened, but he certainly didn't commit a boner. He was a big part of it. It's McCormick, who's boot after the single and left caused the Cubs to get two runs. So if this result had been real life, the Cubs would have won. It would have been a great pennant race. But Fred Burkle would just be known as a decent hitter for the Giants back before World War I. By the way, I did this tonight because the channel hit 100 subscribers in the last couple days. And I really want to tell you just how much I appreciate that. Um, this is a labor of love. I don't get paid for it. It'd be nice to figure out how to get some advertising revenue in here because I love doing this and teaching about sports history. And that's what the Retro Sports Network is all about, is about rediscovering history and having a good time. Now we play a lot of modern day stuff, 70s and 80s, because that's what I'm familiar with. And, and a lot of you who, are, who watch this stuff are you know watching for the era that you're familiar with but someone had requested that i do this game and it was like the day after the 110th anniversary of this specific game and so i knew that was the next retro sports network classic but as a hundred subscriber special i figured what the hey let's do it so that's what it is so from the bottom of my heart thank you so much for making this channel what it is we're going to continue to do games and actually have some interview shows along with some other things that I hope meet your approval. So thank you, thank you, thank you. A special shout out to Al Red Sox fan who's been so supportive of my efforts. Thank you so much. All right, hit that like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'm Ron Juckett for Retro Sports Network. We'll talk to you the next time.